all right so this is my first youtube video so forgive me if i'm just seem like i'm all over the place uh but i want to talk about um how god taught me last week how you truly repent and the meaning of strange dreams okay so last week i kept having these strange dreams about me being gay i had a girlfriend uh, and these dreams kept recurring and I've been having them for some years now and I never really questioned and I just chunked it up to, oh, it's just a strange dream. It don't really mean nothing. It's just a dream and it's not real. So last week though, I had this dream like back to back and in the last dream, you know, the girl was like cheating on me. So it made me very, very upset. And it made me upset to the point where I woke up like that. And when I woke up like that, I was really confused. I was really thrown off. And I was like, Lord, why am I having these dreams about being gay when I'm not gay? And the Lord clearly answered me back and said, you're not gay now, but you're having these dreams because at one point in your life, you dabbled in homosexuality and you never truly repented for it. And I was speechless because that was true. Uh, at one point in my life, I had gotten very, very promiscuous. I mean, I, uh, I had been raped. And molested from the age of 12 to 24 and in that I became like really really bitter I was very bitter and I just started sleeping around with no regard I was just kind of out there I'm talking about extremely out there and even I although I was raised in church I even started dabbling in homosexuality for two months two months and I know people are thinking that sounds lame uh but it was literally for two months and then I began to pray and God you know God helped me through that situation but I never really owned it I never really repented for anything because I always had a reason for why I was that way I always had a reason for why I was angry. Uh, somebody said this to me, or you did that to me, or I was promiscuous because I was raped. I was promiscuous because I was molested, or I, 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 I cussed this person out because of this, or because of that. And the Lord says, no, when you repent, you have to own it. You cannot use another person as an escape go to say this person was the reason why I did X, Y, Z or I did X, Y, Z because I was abandoned. I did X, Y, Z because I was shot. I did X, Y, Z because uh, nobody understood me or because I was angry. No, the Lord is going to say when he opens that book in judgment, all he cares about is what did I say? versus what did you do so when you repent the lord is saying you have to own it you have to own it with no excuse and say lord forgive me i am sorry i did x y z because i wanted to and i don't have an excuse for defying you i know what you said i'm sorry i hurt you i'm sorry i sinned against you forgive me for those that are hurt uh, in this act, forgive me for the things that I said, forgive me for the things that I did against you, the sin that I did against in my body against you, the sin that I did with another in my body against you, the things that I said against you the, of another person, please forgive me. When you repent like that, then God takes it out of the books in heaven. Because what God was showing me was a lot of Christians are going to find themselves in a lot of trouble because they of unrepented sins and and what he was showing me is when we when we were sinning in our lives before we started walking with him we did any and everything under the sun any and everything under the sun we did it with whether it adultery fornicating lying stealing robbing whatever the case may be whatever your sin was the lord says in the spirit realm your white robe begins to bear that stain like it's on your robe okay so wherever it's at it's all on your robe and it's piling up and your robe is beginning to stink stink right because your robe is filthy in the spirit we can't see our spiritual robes but the spirits can the demons can and the angels can everybody in the spirit realm can see your robe except for you so what the lord was showing to me 
A lot of Christians, we give our life to God and we be, and God changes us. Yes, he does. He cleans us up. We're not doing these things anymore. We're not, we're not dabbling in homosexuality. We're not lying anymore. We're not fornicating anymore. We're not adultery. We're not stealing. We're not doing these things, but we never repented of the last. Okay. So what the Lord showed me was once he comes into our life and he cleanses us and he washes us, our robe is now has a spot on it from the sin that we did that we never repented of. He was saying, it's just like when you eat lunch and you eat a burger and you drop ketchup on your shirt and then you go and wash the shirt, the shirt still has that ketchup stain, right? So that's what the law was saying. When he comes into your life and he cleanses you up, your robe is washed, but it still bears all of the sins that is unrepented in the form of spots. And everything in the spirit realm can see your spots. And the Lord was showing me that the reason why you're having these dreams, because at nighttime, your spirit man goes and revisit these things on your robe. Like you start to have like these, what you would call a weird dream, but it's really something that maybe you have dibbled, dibbled and dabbled in and before. It could be something that you've forgotten that you did long ago, but it's something that you dibbled and dabbled in that God is trying to bring it to your attention so that you can repent, okay? So that's what the Lord was just showing me. And the Lord was saying to me that when we have these spots and things on our robes that we don't repent of, the devils, they know what to tempt you with. If your spot on your robe or something you never repented for was pornography, no matter how you try to break forward out of that pornography, the demon's going to just keep bringing it back and back and back and back and back and back to you until you get the victory of it. Because to all they know, you never got the victory of it because they could see the spot, the stain still on your robe. Okay? So what you do is you have to go do your sins one by one and confess them and say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I am sorry for dabbling in pornography or if it be witchcraft, Father Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I am sorry for dabbling in witchcraft. I don't have no excuse for why I did what I did for the sins that I did against you. I was lost in that moment. I enjoyed what I did. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me and blot out my transgressions out of the books and then God will blot out your transgressions because he said he is faithful and just to forgive you. He is faithful and just. And if you don't repent of those sins, when you stand before the Lord in judgment, your heart will begin to speak for you. Your heart, all these things will be in your heart, in your heart. And the Lord will begin to convict you by the things in your heart. So you have to repent by owning it, by not saying, I was abandoned and so I did this. I was raped and so I did this. I was cheated on and so I did this. No, at the end of the day, the Lord said that did not work for Eve. That did not work for Adam. When she blamed the serpent, that did not get her out of trouble. When Eve, when Adam blamed Eve, that did not get him out of trouble. They all got a punishment and that's not going to get you out of trouble on the day of judgment. You're going to have to just straight up own it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me of this. I was so lost at the time in my life. I didn't understand how my sin was hurting you. I didn't understand that this was even being written in my books and recorded against me. And I was worse. I didn't understand how the devil was using these sins against me to get the glory, God, because I never acknowledged them. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Take this out of my book. Cast my sins into the sea of forgiveness and remember them no more. And God will do that. And God will do that for you because he said that he would. He said that he would. And that's how you repent by owning it. Not just saying, Lord, forgive me all my sins. And then that's it. No, you own the sin that you did. He showed, he likened it to a credit report. When you go down your credit report and one by one, you begin to dispute each charge so that it can come off. The sins against you in heaven is called a charge. And you need to dispute these charges so that they can come off your report. 
It's the same thing. So you have to go one by one and acknowledge the sin, not blaming nobody else for why you did it, but taking ownership of what you did and saying, God, I'm so sorry. I don't have no excuse why I did this. I knew that that was a bad thing. And I was just caught up in myself. I was caught up in the moment. Please, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please forgive me. And the Lord would do that. And once the Lord removes that spot off of your robe, your robe is pristine white. And then once I begin to do that, I begin to weep. As the Lord had revealed that to me, I begin to weep. And the Lord said, get up. And go pray. And I got up immediately and I went to pray and I started just naming all my sins one by one by one by one by one. And it took me some time to go through that. And even still going through that, I'm still doing it right today because you have been doing these things for a lifetime. You're not going to remember every single thing, but you just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to bring things back to remembrance, bring things back to remembrance, things that's in my books, things that I need to repent about, bring it back to remembrance. But after that, that initial night, when I began to go back and repent for the homosexuality, when I began to go back and repent for just the things that I had did against God, one by one by one by one, it took me some time to do it. But when I got finished, I clearly heard the Holy Spirit say, ah, cleansiness is next to godliness and then i understood what god meant by that scripture to be clean is to have a clean robe a clean robe in the spirit just white to be clean and pure of of of, of, of indiscretions of iniquities of against, against sins against god things that you haven't repented on do not let pride cause you to go into hell Take your time and repent. God is not even condemning you at this point. He is simply chastising you and saying, you are my child. I love you. I'm bringing these things to your attention so that you can dispute your books and clear your credit report, so to speak, so that you can acknowledge these things right now in the land of the living. Because when we stand before God and the white throne judgment, your mouth is not going to be able to speak for you. When you stand before God and he says, did you do X, Y, Z? You're not going to be able to say, oh, I did this because I was gay. I mean, because I had been molested. I did this because I was abandoned. I did this because somebody turned me out and then blah, blah, blah. You're not going to be able to blame other people like Adam and Eve was doing. You know why? Because in heaven, your mouth will not be able to speak. Only your heart will speak and in the in the and when your heart speaks your heart will not lie for you that's why the bible says if your heart condemns you then i will condemn you because i am greater than your heart i am greater than your heart so if your heart condemns you i condemn you so you have to do this you have to do this this is it's it's easy to do god is such a forgiving father he is so loving and he is so merciful all he wanted you to ever do was just own it just own it just acknowledge that you did it. Just acknowledge that you need to help. Say, God, help me. This is something I'm struggling with. I've been trying to get rid of this. Uh, I've been trying to stop doing this for X, Y, Z. But the reason why you're struggling with it, because the stain is still on your robe. The spot is still on your robe. And so the demons are going to still keep tempting you with masturbation. They're going to still keep tempting you with pornography. They're going to still keep tempting you with anger and rage. Because the spots... It's still on your spiritual road. And you want to get that off. God said he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Those are the spots that he's talking about. The spots of unrepented sins. Because an unrepented sin to the Lord is just like a sin that you have no remorse for doing. You don't have no remorse. I, I defied you and I don't have no remorse about it. Thank you for cleaning me up, but uh, I don't have no remorse about what I said to my baby daddy. I don't have no remorse about what I did with old Susie. I don't have no remorse for what I did with a married man. I'm just glad you cleaned me up, but I don't have no remorse about those other things. And then God was like, I can't, I can't forgive something that you never, that you never acknowledged. I can't forgive something you never acknowledge. All God wants you to do is just acknowledge it. And he said it's right there in his word. If you confess your faults one to another, God is faithful and just to heal you of all unrighteousness. He will heal it, take that things away from you. He said, I remember that you are just dust. 
You are just dust. I'm not a high priest that I can't be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. I know what it's like to live on this earth. I walk this earth. Although I did not sin, I saw people like you. I know what they went through. I was tempting myself. I did not sin, but I get it. I just want you to acknowledge it so that I could take it away. And I believe what the Lord was trying to teach me. Some of the things that we are calling strange dreams, like why would I do that in my dream? That's something I would never do in real life. Well, it's probably something that you actually did in real life and you've forgotten about it. You've forgotten about it and you've went on with your life. But God is trying to bring it back to your attention so that he can begin to heal you and take it away and take it away. Have you ever wondered why you keep getting the same thing over and over and over again? And you hear people in the spirit room say, it's like a test. You're going to get the same thing until you pass it. It's cost, it's the stain. It's the stains. So the, the demons, the spirits, the devil, they can see the stains, the spots, and they know what to tempt you with. That's like being a, a sugar addict. He know to tempt you with cookies, sweets, candies, things of that nature. I'm going to keep bringing candy to her because I can see that she loves it. It's on her rope. It's on her rope. And so that's what the Lord taught me about how to repent, how to truly repent with your heart. With your heart, God said, he told the people in the Bible, stop rending your clothes. Stop tearing your clothes and, and throwing all this dirt on your head and stuff like that. Stop doing that. He said, rend your hearts. Rend your hearts. If you're truly sorry, rend your heart. Tell me you're sorry. Repent. Feel it. I, you should feel something. If you're saying you're sorry, you should feel something. It should not be just some dry response. Oh, forgive me of my sins, God. And that's it. You should feel something. You should feel something. You should feel some remorse. God, I'm so sorry. I didn't get it at the time. I didn't realize the detriment of what I was doing to my soul. I didn't realize what you meant when you said you cannot dwell in the unclean temple. I was lost back then. I was living in darkness. There was no light in me. Forgive me. That's all he want you to do. Because he loves you so much, he's going to be waiting right there to clean your books, to clean up your robes, you know, so that you can get into heaven, so that you can get raptured up out of here. He just wants to do that for you so bad, so that he will come and visit you in your dreams, in the middle of the night, and things that you think that don't make sense. He is trying to get your attention, and get your attention, and get your attention, and get your attention, and say, this is something I need you to repent of. And it took the Lord to show that to me. And I know for a fact God showed that to me because that's not something I would have ever knew. I, I been raised in church all my life. Never have I, nobody told me the sins stains us. Just like if you spill grape juice on a white shirt, that stains it. Nobody never taught me that. And nobody never taught me that an unrepentant sin leaves a spot. On, on my spiritual road, that Lord took me in the spirit realm and showed me that himself. He showed me that himself and he said, this is how we get the spots. By the sins that is not unrepented of and everything in the spirit realm can see your road. God can see it. The angels can see it. The devils can see it. The demons can see it. Everybody in the spirit realm can see your robe. You want a clean robe. You want a clean robe. You want to ask the Lord, forgive me for stealing. Forgive me. That time I was stealing, I just thought it was funny. I thought it was a thing to do. God, I was so naive. I didn't know no better. But forgive me. But you got to repent. You got to own it without blaming nobody else. You got to stand in, in it and own it. You cannot be a victim. If you are always the victim and if somebody hurt you, we've all been hurt. We've all been lied to. We've all been cheated on. We've all been lied on. We've all been whatever, abused in some form of way. But if you're always the victim to the point where you have done no wrong and that your wrong is justified by being a victim, then you will never truly repent. And you will never truly break free of what's holding you. Some people are linked to their children's baby daddy and father through anger. You just you just hate him or you hate her and you don't know why you've moved on you three marriages ago, but you hate this woman because you have never taken, you have never acknowledged, you have never A, forgiven her and B, you have never acknowledged the wrong that you did. And so you're still linked in the spirit realm 
to that person. And it's just extreme anger. And God said, you have to forgive so that he can forgive you. And I don't even know why I got on that. I'm guessing the Lord wants somebody to hear that. But he was saying, you have to forgive. That's why you pray the 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 daily prayer, the Lord's prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us right there. That's what God got you. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us. So you're going to have to forgive your baby mama, your baby daddy first and foremost before God can forgive you because that's the that's the law that's binding in that prayer. Forgive us our debts. You ask them to be forgiven first. And then you say, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us, those who have hurt us. You're going to have to forgive uh, deadbeat mamas, deadbeat daddies, abusive mothers, abusive fathers, ab ab abusive children, abusive spouses. You're going to have to forgive so that God can forgive you, so that these things can be blotted out of your books, so that, that the devils can stop using you in the form of hate, in the form of anger, you getting mad, you cussing everybody out. You can't keep friendships because you're just cussing everybody out. And the biggest lie the devil have ever told anybody that has a vulgar mouth is that you just a person that keep it real. You, I'm just keeping it real. I don't have no filter. That is not cute. That is not of God. God cannot get the victory out of that. God can't use you. God cannot use you because you are glorifying in you are glorifying in hurting someone and, and and speaking life. The Bible says speak life, but you are glorifying in just being bluntly rude, bluntly rude, and and that's the biggest trick that the devil got on a lot of people. I'm just a person that keep it real. You can't handle it. I'm just a person. I don't have no filter. They're gonna have to deal with it. The Lord made me like this, but that is not true. That is a lie from the devil to keep you bound. Why? So that he can keep using you. So that he can keep using you to destroy other God's other children. Because in that moment, he's already got you. But his goal is to make you trip up somebody else. Trip up your baby daddy. To trip up your baby mama. To trip up the kids. To trip up their, your co-workers, your, your spouse. Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, or whatever the case may be, the devil is going to keep using you to get that victory. So you have to repent from your heart by acknowledging that nobody made you do what you did. At the end of the day, maybe they was a catalyst, but they was not the cause. The cause because God gave you free will. You knew right from wrong and you chose it. Sin is premeditated. There is no sin that you could do that you just stumble upon unless it's a, unless it's just a thought. Maybe yeah, those, those, those things, you can have thoughts and not be aware that there are sins. But an uh, actual sin that you are doing with your body, with your mouth, with your hands, those things are nine times out of ten is premeditated. It's premeditated sin. You knew it was wrong. You had time to think on it. You had time to back up out of it. But you did it anyway. So you can't blame people at the end of the day. Because when you stand before the Lord, your mouth will not work. Hear me what I'm saying. Because this is what he told me. And I wept like a baby. When you stand before me, your mouth will not speak for you. Because the mouth can lie. But the heart cannot. And the heart is the only thing that's going to speak for you. And guess what? The Bible says the word and the spirit bear witness. So your heart is not going to lie for you. It's going to acknowledge what God's word is. And it's going to acknowledge what you knew. And it's going to acknowledge what you did. And it's the heart is going to say, I was wrong and I don't have no excuse for it. So it's better to repent now on this side before the Lord comes back. It's before the Lord comes back. Let the Lord justify, rectify your books in heaven. I pray that all the time. Father God, rectify my books in heaven uh, while on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this time to repent right now so that when I stand before you, all of that is out of my books. 
In Jesus' name, I want to pray with someone that is struggling. I don't know why I keep feeling this, but I just keep feeling anger. Anger. Somebody watching this video have a lot of extreme anger. Everything. Anger. Anger at anger at your mom. Anger at your dad. You even I see people angry at children. Just extreme anger. Let me pray with you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind up the spirit of anger. We bind up the spirit of unforgiveness, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We ask that you help us. We ask that you set free. We rebuke every spirit and every demon, God, in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, that comes against your children, that will not release them, oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you break every yoke, oh God. Break every yoke, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, every yoke of anger, every yoke of bondage, every yoke of destruction, oh God, every yoke of verbal abuse, oh God, every yoke of mental abuse, oh God, every yoke, oh God, of just, just sadness and destruction and the spirit of depression, the Lord bind you and rebuke you in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke the spirit of depression, the spirit of, uh, of, of suicide, in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebuke and bind you, in the name of Jesus, you cannot have his children. Oh God, Father God, have your way in your children's lives. Forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, Father God. Oh God, be merciful unto your servants, oh God. Remember that we are just dust, Father. We forgive us, oh God. Deliver us. Send your angels, oh God, to set us free. Fill every soul under the sound of my voice with this with the Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh God, the comforter that you have sent to keep us and seal us, oh God, until the day that you return. Help us, oh God, to get free of demonic influences and demonic entities and familiar spirits, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us forgive. Oh God, we bind up the spirit of unforgiveness, the Lord Yahweh, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the blood of the Christ. Cross the blood of Yah be upon the spirit of unforgiveness in the name of Jesus. Let it go. Hallelujah. I just keep hearing in my spirit. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Let it go. Hallelujah. Let God have his way in your life that he can heal your heart. That God can re heal your hearts, Father God, creating them a clean heart and renewing them a right spirit within them, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, let this message go out. Let this message bless. This is my first YouTube video, and I know I seem to probably rumbled around, but I pray I, I pray it made sense. Go one by one and repent. Repent. Write your things down. I don't care what it is. If you dibbled and dabbled in it, repent, repent 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 because the bible says every man will give an, uh, an account for every idle word or everything it's been written in the books in your books in heaven please please trust and believe me this is what the lord said himself you need to repent and own your sins without blaming someone else and god will heal you of that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that this has blessed you in some type of way. In Jesus' name, till we meet again, be blessed. God loves you, and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.